What's up, YouTube? It's Dean Charles Anthony II. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, back again with another video. So, uh, with this particular video, we're going to talk about five things I wish I knew uh, before I started photography. Um, yeah, you know, we all watch a lot of YouTube. We all, like, see the glitz and glamour of the Instagrams and of the reels and all that jazz. But there's a reality to it. Um, and I'm going to tell you how I feel. That's really what I was going to come down to. So, number one. You do not have to be a full-time photographer to be a professional photographer, all right? So I know this might sound crazy or controversial, right? So I work a full-time job. I actually have a career in politics that I also do, um, community organizing, uh, but I'm also a photographer. I've been consistently a photographer for, oh, Jesus Christ, um, since about 2014, so it's 2020 now. Y'all can do the math. Seven years? I'm getting it wrong. It's one of the two. But, uh, but I've been consistently taking pictures since then, right? So I've been getting paid since then. I have been um, booked for shoots. Um, no, I don't shoot every single week. No, I don't have a month booked up every single month. Because, like I said, I have a full-time job that I also do. But photography has brought in a few extra thousand dollars a month. Um, you know, when you scale it out over a, a full year, that has really been a blessing to my family, a blessing to my actual working life. When the money was short while working a full time job, X, Y, and Z, photography has always been there for me. So, one, so I just want to make sure people know that you don't have to be a full time photographer to be a successful one, because success is really just really what you make it. Like if your definition of success is being a full-time photographer making six figures or whatnot then you have to aim for that success for me it's never been actually more than making about fifty thousand dollars a year if I make fifty thousand which is a livable income right if I'm making fifty thousand dollars a year off photography um, that is success for me, right? And that is success now, right? <laughs> right now, at this moment for me, because of what my other main job does. So a few years ago, it was $30,000. Shoot, it was $20,000 at one point, right? Um, so I don't need to be booked up all year round in order to be a successful photographer. I have been published um, for a lot of my civil rights work. I have gotten checks for individual images. I have checked off a lot of boxes personally for myself that, um, <laughs> yeah, I am not a feeling photographer. And most of all, I love my images and my clients love my images. So, you know, you don't have to be full-time. You can be a part-time successful photographer. I guarantee you like 85% of these YouTubers are part-time professional photographers because of what they do, they do YouTube. Uh, so be real careful about like diving into the hype that you have to be a, uh, uh, a full-time or you gotta be making these millions, getting all these, um, <laughs> all these uh, like accolades or working with the best models and X, Y, and Z. That's not true. You can just be a part-time photographer and be very successful. <sighs> all right, so, t so thing number two, right? New gear does not result in new business. And so this is where this comes from, right? So there are jobs that you're going to need professional gear to accommodate that job, right? So if you need something with strong weather, weather ceiling, a T2I ain't going to work, right? If you need a very strong cinema uh, camera because you're shooting a movie or you're shooting something like that, you need that particular gear, something that shoots raw or X, Y, and Z. You need those things, right? But if you're, especially if you're just starting out, buying gear is not going to really matter for you getting uh, better jobs or getting more jobs um, because you need to just be shooting. Uh, when you have a portfolio, like if you have a portfolio of amazing, amazing images with like a base level camera, that's going to get you jobs. You know, putting those pictures out there um continuing to grow networking you know finding other opportunities to get uh to get pay like those things are going to equate to equate to you getting more money getting new jobs and you know that opened up the opportunities to get new cameras or get new gear get things that you might need straps all that jazz memory cards blah 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 but just having the idea like oh i'm not making money so <laughs> let me uh spend money that's not from my business 
to buy new gear because that'll make me money is not the case. If you're not shooting as a photographer, as a videographer, as a creative, if you're not shooting, that's what's resulting in you not making money. It's not the gear. It's a lot of time it's the work ethic. I know that's something that I had to uh, work through myself. Uh, I went and bought a, uh, I had a T2I, I bought a 5D Mark III. Uh, I love my 5D Mark III. But um, that 5D Mark III, wasn't what made me a better photographer when i bought that 5d mark 3 i also bought um a 50 millimeter yeah uh 50 millimeter 1.4 with me so that 50 millimeter 1.4 um switching from that i want to say it was an 18 to 55 you know uh with that varied uh varied aperture um that made me a better photographer because I had to, I couldn't just zoom in, right? I stopped making people's faces all, you know, zoomed out or whatnot. But uh, I took some time. I had to move my feet. I had to like really work to make sure I framing people well on X, Y, Z, which made me a better photographer. I think starting off honestly with prime lenses makes you a whole lot better, uh, better of a photographer. I me mean, personally, I love my zooms. My 7200 is my favorite lens, right? But being able to putting yourself in some form of constraints or like uh, pushing your limits of creativity or the um, or just your available area will make you a better photographer or vide videographer, which will then put you in opportunities to promote yourself to book better jobs. Number three, don't wait for other people to give you an opportunity. And so this is actually something that's kind of like a... Um, that bothers me, but I see a lot when they talk when people talk about wedding photographers. Um, a lot of times they'll say is, you know, weddings. Oh my God, they are so important, which they are. I'm not gonna say they're not, <laughs> but they're so important that like if you before you ever book a wedding, you need to work with somebody who has wedding experience or like you need to shadow under them, right? That is a great idea. Um, but a lot of times it's not really practical. I know for me, I didn't get an opportunity. I didn't, I, did, I shot my fifth wedding before I ever had the opportunity to, um, to actually sh uh, second shoot for somebody, right? I was already like pretty good. I was actually pretty disappointed about the money <laughs> by the time the first time I second shot for somebody. And because of that, I just went ahead and decided that I was going to take things into my own hands. I knew I wanted to shoot weddings. I'm a person who loves love. Um, and so I do disagree with someone or anyone should wait until someone else gives them an opportunity in order to take on opportunities. There are $500 weddings. And if you're starting off in weddings, do not feel bad about taking a $100, a $200, a $300, or a $500 wedding. Um, because it's better for you to get the experience on a cheap wedding that uh, one, you get room to make mistakes, it's pretty should be understood that the pictures aren't going to be the highest quality. Um, there's enough YouTube videos, especially right now, to like help people with checklists and like you know just with what expectations. Especially if you've been to a wedding yourself, you kind of know how things kind of flow, right? But you have enough resources already to go ahead and start shooting weddings, right? Now, once you are ready to, once you shot those. Uh, those cheaper weddings and you get a nice little portfolio, you kind of get the uh, the uh, the speed of things, then it's good for you to jump up and start shooting these more bigger budget weddings. But like your quality got to match it. So when I shoot, shot my first wedding <laughs> that I got paid $300 for, it doesn't look right like the same thing as my current weddings that I make like $3,000 for. You know, it comes with time. And so don't be, don't, <laughs> Don't stop yourself from taking opportunities, good opportunities to gain experience because one, there's no one in your, cause that was just to be honest, there was no one in the area that I was in that was willing to like, let me shadow them. I did reach out. I do think you should reach out if someone's available to let you, but don't stop just because someone else is giving you a reason to, uh, uh, someone hasn't given you the okay to say that you can shoot a wedding. You talk to them clients that are on a budget and you say, look, I ain't never shot a wedding before. I'm fine with shooting your wedding for this $250, for this $300, and then you shoot their wedding. They know what they're getting for $300, and you let them know what they're getting for $300 because that is a safe place to make a mistake. Um, you know, try to make as few mistakes, you know, make sure you get a picture of them kissing. Make sure you get a good picture of them dancing. Make sure you get a good picture here and there, X, Y, and Z. Get a flash. But <laughs> make sure that like you do take those opportunities when they're offered to you. For number four, um, things I wish I knew, um, go ahead and buy extra batteries. Uh, this is probably one of the most easiest 
and I'll actually, you know what, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to have to buy extra batteries and buy extra memory cards, right? <laughs> uh, because those are the two things that you're going to always need as a photographer. Um, I know when I first started, I, you know, I got my camera used and I got off-brand batteries. Those off-brand batteries are great the first six months. Them things are going to die X, Y, Z. So I was happy, you know, I got like a... I guess it was new or you know the Amazon brand or whatnot and I bought a, like a pack of those because those batteries are going to die and batteries in general they're going to uh, to die and they're gonna start working uh, a quick horror story for me personally um, I was shooting uh, a wedding earlier in my career and I had two batteries with me right I had one camera two batteries and I was shooting the camera and like I was like why do I keep cutting off like I kept had to cutting off on and off what I didn't realize is that I thought, oh, maybe I missed the charge or like, you know, you didn't plug it all the way up or something like that. But I realized, oh, this battery doesn't corrupt it. <laughs> it just stopped working at this point. And so now I'm sad in the, uh, uh, at this wedding. But luckily I had a second battery, right? So while I had to plug, and thank you, Jesus, <laughs> but I had to plug my uh, uh, that one battery up and make sure it's full, I'm cutting my camera on and off. Click 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 get three shots cut it on off get three shots because that's the only that's as much as uh this battery was going to give me in between shots because it wasn't working anymore so one thing i would tell every photographer make sure you have several several batteries with you um i keep four with me right now well two because i got a 1dx my three but i keep four for the 60 mark ii like i'm shooting on right now and i keep another four for my um my uh, 5D Mark IV. So I keep batteries <laughs> on me. And then the second one uh, in this section is memory cards. You can never have enough memory cards. You never know when one's gonna break. I had a shoot where um, um, my memory card, I didn't realize fell out my bag and I drove over it. Um, and I actually just had to, so uh, I drove, I ended up the one driving over and I drove to my shoot. Luckily I had an extra memory card, but I'm like, where it is? I had just bought this one, it was nice, 256 gigs so I could just shoot all day with um, but when I got back home and I look under my car I look at where I was parked I was parked slightly different and there it goes I ran over my memory card so you definitely never want um, not having a memory card to be an issue when you're going on a shoot there's just some things that you don't want to tell a client to be like oh I need to go buy a memory card or uh, I need to go buy a battery or I don't have these things at the start of the shoot can we push things back because you know that's just a bad experience for the client oh number five and this is going to be the last one and we're going to hop off this one get a prime lens um, i think every photographer um starting off especially when you get your kit lenses you get those cheaper zooms or whatnot that 18 to 55 that i mentioned earlier i'm throwing over my notes <laughs> uh 1855 or something like that um those lenses are great to get you to start. It helps you like kind of understand like how to use your camera X, Y, and Z. Um, the very next thing, and I would say a 50 millimeter would be the next lens that I would suggest anyone to get, is to get a prime lens. Whether you choose, um, and I kind of say stay in the the trilogy, not the trilogy, the trinity of, of prime. So that 35, 50, and the 85. Um, I personally, I'm not a big fan of the 85. But the 50 and the 35, I think, are great for everyone starting off. The 50 um, is, uh, is a great at portraits. You can use it during that wedding. You can use it for everything that you need. Uh, that 35 is greater, better for landscapes. It's better for group shots, X, Y, and Z. You can kind of get a little bit more real estate with while being in the same spot. But get you a prime lens and just practice with that lens because it'll help you really see how to frame um, frame people. It'll help you to, uh, one, lower f-stops then if, for those zoom. So I think my first prime was a 51.4. So that just gave me an opportunity to shoot in darker environments to blur out that background a little bit more. I still remember my very first shoot after getting a 50 uh, uh, millimeter and I was like, man, these pictures are some of the best things I think I've ever taken. And it was just because I had to look at the picture more. I'm taking the picture, I was like, oh, they feet cropped off. Oh, these things are happening. So so it forced me to slow down to make sure that everything was exactly as the way that is needed uh, so we could have a better shot. And so, you know, that was really where I believe where my foundation for my photography really grew with that 50, with that prime, because I had to take the time to really shoot well, uh, uh, shoot, uh, yeah, really shoot well with this one focal length um, and just doing my best to get the all the 
the images to be something that my client really liked. That when I moved and finally got my 7200, I was like, okay, cool, I got this, we can make this work. But those are my five things. Let me know what you thought, like, subscribe, Throw some questions in the comments. Let me know what video you want to see next. But I really appreciate everyone. We are 323 subscribers at this point. I said when I go to 500 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, I think it's going to be a 50 millimeter. I'm not doing a mirrorless 50 millimeter. Y'all get no more than $200. Maybe $300 because we'll be at 500. We'll, we'll figure it out. But we'll do a giveaway or something like that. But thank y'all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your day. This is Dean. Uh, owner of Ant Pick, just so y'all know. But make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Talk to y'all later. Bye.